Action, take one. Hi everybody, we've just arrived in Maine. We have finished our time in Boston and I thoroughly enjoyed the visit. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. I had a great time. It was uh, the Bean Town. I, I remember it well from being there many, many years ago. Probably. Thoroughly enjoyed the, the visit. Uh, <laughs> Piper's cleaning my legs off. We've, we've been for a little hike this morning. But thoroughly enjoyed the visit. Most big cities, people are not. We got grass cutting going on outside, a licky dog, and a sneezing cat. An asthmatic cat. <laughs> yeah. from Boston and she hates the sound that goodbyes make she loves Sundays and champagne she can't stand the winter and she can't stand anything that she can't change and she can't change but she is whatever she wants to be and she is a little of everything mixed up so tough in a beautiful way She's got the world in her fingertips She makes beauty look effortless And I want everything she is She is, she is Well, I want everything she is Oh, yeah What are you doing? Are you in your blanket? Is your tail wagon? Are you super happy? <laughs> <laughs> Most big cities you go to, people are not overly friendly and cars honking and everything else. And Boston traffic is as bad as any big city uh, because you have so many people moving on such limited road space. But I didn't think it was terrible at all. No. Yeah, it was very well managed. It's busy and it's full and it moves slow at times, but there's never, never idiot traffic, I call it. <laughs> people are aggressive, and but people are courteous enough to let mm -hmm. others over. And it, it's the best big city traffic I think I've been in yeah. in a long time. Oh, yeah, definitely. So thank you, everyone who lives in the area <laughs> who helped accommodate us driving this giant he went down the highway. Yeah. And through the city. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we got there on day one. We we stayed at I can't say it, Wampatuck State Park, maybe. Yeah. Uh it's a little southeast of Boston proper. So Blair and I have made it to Massachusetts. Uh we're not far outside of Boston. It's a great little park here. We are about to head downtown and see what we can get ourselves into. Uh, 20-minute drive with no traffic, maybe? Yeah, probably. To down, I mean, to downtown. So Center of downtown, yeah. Yeah, and nice day, cheap park, state park, quiet. Lots of green space. Plenty of green space. Spaces are very distant from each other. I mean, you, you almost feel isolated in your yes. little spot, yeah, which is nice. Each little spot has trees all the way around. Yeah. Difference in where we are right now, I can almost touch somebody out this window and touch somebody out that window. Yeah. Which is okay. Um, it's a nice view out this window, except when the sun's beaming in behind us, you can't see anything. Yeah. We got there the first day. We drove into town. We walked around the waterfront on the uh, upper end. What was it? What was it called? The north end. North end. So yeah. the north end in Little Italy. Mm -hmm. Walked around the waterfront there, looked at some sailboats, just kind of mapped out what we were going to do when we went back the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, day two was planned to be a hop-on, hop-off trolley tour. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly recommend any hop-on, hop-off trolley tour if you're unfamiliar with the city or you just want to see the highlights. And that goes for any city you've ever been to. Yeah. Most major cities today have that hop-on, hop-off tour. And I think they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
They allow you to get through the city in a way that would be difficult for one person driving, paying attention to the road, the other person looking around. You have all these... Yes, it is a tourist trap in a sense, but you get a lot of information about the city that you wouldn't necessarily get elsewhere. Yes. And then you can kind of navigate through the city and figure out what stops you want to get off at, how long you want to spend there, when you want to get back on. They typically rotate buses every 20 to 30 minutes. Um, so it's a really cool experience. Yeah. We've also done it in San Diego, I believe. San Diego. We've yeah. done it together in San Diego. Yeah. I've done it in... Many big cities. Yeah. A couple other cities I've gone to. Tourist yeah. cities. Yeah. If you're going to do it, here's a pro travel tip. <laughs> Get there and be on the very first bus and stay on that bus for the entire route and then go back and get off at the stops you want to get off at. Mm -hmm. But ride the entire route for the first route as long as you have a good talkative driver, which mm -hmm. most of those people do it yeah. you know, professionally anyway and have a really good time. Um, so we did. We, we rode around the city. We got off at a few spots. We... We didn't start at stop number one. We started at stop number two or three. Yeah, you know, somewhere down the line. But yeah. we had walked, and we saw the Paul Revere Church. We saw the Paul Revere statue. We saw... Say what? The British are coming. The British are coming. We saw the Paul Revere House. <laughs> if uh, they ask you any trivia questions on your hop on hop off bus tour, nine out of ten times the answer will be Paul Revere. Yes, he. The guy did everything in the town. Yeah. Welcome to the USS Constitution, the oldest Navy ship in the United States Navy. It is actually ran and manned by active duty sailors. Mm -hmm. So they get uh, orders here. They have to put in for orders here. And they come work here and, and man the rails and do all the things and take care of this still active duty Navy ship. Yeah. What do you think? I didn't realize that active duty... Coast Guard or no, Navy. Navy. I, could, I did not realize that active active duty Navy um, personnel were manning the ship. Sailors. I th yeah, sailors. I did. I thought that it would just be like part of the national historic national park system, yeah. like volunteers. That's a cool assignment, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah, we looked into some of the sleeping quarters. There's. Um, like cot hammocks that go like 15 to 20 across mm -hmm. and then towards the front you get to sleep you get to sleep doing this yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then the officers have small individual quarters yeah. which are pretty interesting as well yeah. awesome that's cool let's so go get a stamp cool on to the next stop and we left there and went over to back across the bridge by the madison square garden and then we went around to town. Yeah. Some of the neat things about the city, there's uh, there's just one row of streets where all the signs outside have not only the written name, but also a picture That's depicting of what it was. Like yeah. a great a wine stop had a great thing hanging up yeah. front. A chiropractor had a little spine yeah, on it. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, a leather uh, maker had boots. A uh, salon for, had scissors. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. Pretty cool. Then we stopped at a pretty cool, famous bar, Bull and Finch Bar. You might know it better as Cheers. Yes. Uh, from the hit TV series for many fun. years in the 80s and the early 90s. Mm -hmm. It was one of my grandfather's favorite shows, and I have a lot of fond memories of watching the show and always seeing the, the Cheers sign. Um, I believe they recreated a bar from the from the set and in a pub upstairs, but the actual yeah. Golden Fence bar that you go down into, I can see where they got the theme from for mm -hmm. the show, but it's not the same. It's not near as big. Yeah. But we went in there. We got a little refrigerator magnet from from Cheers. <laughs> we did. I forgot about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. We unfortunately did not get to take the bus to MIT. Yes. And Harvard and Cambridge, um, they're, they're doing construction on the bridge. So Blair learned that. the Harvard chant, though. No, it wasn't the Harvard. It was the MIT. The MIT chant. I did not learn it. You're about it to. Is, I'm not going to be able to say it. 
that I'm going to butcher some mathematical terms. I do know pi, though. 3.141. Here's the MIT chant. Oh, my God. This is called the MIT beaver call. Beaver call. Claire, take it away. I'm a beaver. You're a beaver. We are beavers all. And when we get together, we do the beaver call. E to the U. I don't know that. Is it D-U, D-X, or is it? E I don't to know. the U to the D to the Dix. E to the X. X to the D-X. Cosine. Secant. Tangent. Sine. 3.1. 3.14159. One, <laughs> integral. Radical. Mm, mu. <laughs> DV. DV. Slipstick, slide rule, MIT. Go Tech. Go Tech. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I used to know Calc and Trig, and that was in my high school days. So that was fun. I'm a big fan of, of random facts, so I got to hear all the random facts about Boston mm -hmm. and Should trivia. include a very large tea kettle. To include a very large tea kettle. There's a tea kettle that is now above a Starbucks that was in fact utilized for tea. I don't know if it was a Japanese or a Chinese market or tea house, uh, but it holds over 200 gallons of actual 240 gallons. tea. And we went by at night and it was steaming. Yes. Yeah. A tea kettle? What's up with a tea kettle? I, it's now above Starbucks, but it is in fact there way long before the Starbucks. It was a Chinese tea company? A Chinese tea company, maybe? You know how much it holds? Over 200 gallons of tea. <laughs> it can't hold 200 gallons of coffee? No, because it was made for tea. Okay. Okay. We went to the site of the Boston Massacre, which was a deadly riot that occurred on March 5th, 1770 on King Street. It began as a street brawl between American colonists and a lone British soldier, but qu quickly escalated to a chaotic and bloody slaughter. Fennel Hall, it said in multiple ways, I don't know how we're going to yeah. say it. But and Quincy Market. Quincy Market. Um, anywhere in the city is pretty great. And there was a great amount of green space in the city, too. Yes, there was. That was one thing that we kept like mentioning to each other, like as big of a city as Boston is, and the public transportation and the traffic and the tunnels. There's a tunnel that takes a lot of the highway traffic underneath the city as opposed to over or through the city. There is so much green space mm -hmm. in Boston itself, which is awesome to see. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of parks. Then we went to the Red Sox game. Yes. It was game three of the Tampa Bay Rays mm -hmm. series. Mm -hmm. We get in the stadium. I got in trouble. Oh, I tried to go take a video. <laughs> we walked into gate B and we were sitting on the complete opposite side of the stadium, yeah. but I had never been in the stadium before. So I wanted a, a video. So I walked right up the ramp to get a video and they were like, you can't be here. They're just doing their job. Here I am, this oblivious tur tourist. And I was like, oh, sorry. Right. So we went around and got our, our seats. seats. We were behind the uh, dugout. Mm -hmm. In the first base line. Home team dugout That's between right. home base and first base. Maybe ten rows mm -hmm. off the yeah. off the field. Great yeah. seats, really good view. Yeah. It's it's the oldest stadium in baseball. Mm -hmm. And it has such odd angles. Uh, depending yeah, on how to hit a home run, it's really long going yeah. down the first base line, not so long going down the third base line. Mm -hmm. Um the game ended with very, very exciting game ender game. Yep. Um, Hunter Renfro. Yes. Who was not the same Hunter Renfro of my pride and joy, Clemson University <laughs> Tigers, from our championship game. Although, this Hunter Renfro um, hit um, a home run, so he brought in two runs. Down a run. High fly ball, the field. That's way. That pitch out over the plate, like I said, took total advantage of it.
Hunter Renfro, number 27. In the top of the ninth, he came through with a clutch three. bullet rocket to third, to third base. base. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. yeah. And much of the crowd is up at Fenway. Fly ball. That one headed for the alley. Santana with a dive. He can't get it. It rolls behind him. Renfro backs him up. Wendell's heading for third. Here's the throw. The tag. win it oh my goodness Wendell out at third base trying to sprint to third he is cut down and the Sox win a thriller at Fenway Park good ending to a game yeah uh, then we rode to Metro back to where we parked and made our way back to the to the house for the night hey Brad I found a rock oh gosh what kind of rock? A very large rock. Yeah. Called Plymouth. With a date stamp on it. We're in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Yes. Impromptu check yeah. on the post. Over behind us is the Mayflower number two. Mm -hmm. And right over there is Plymouth Rock. Yeah. The Plymouth Rock. The Plymouth Rock. Why'd you leave it at? I don't know if it's the real rock. It just says it's a, it was a big rock that was deposited here that's been worn by many years of tides. Do you think that it was always stamped with 1620? No, they hand carved it in there. <laughs> I know they did. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's a big rock. Yeah. It's a tourist trap, and we got trapped. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and this drove out to the Cape. Mm -hmm. Uh, looked at a lighthouse, yeah. one of the most famous lighthouses out there. Uh, beautiful coast. The New England coast anywhere is pretty gorgeous, I believe. Sleep, got up early the next morning to navigate into the city early mm -hmm. because we were trying to do something pretty unique. We had a stadium tour of the Fenway Stadium at nine, but we wanted to park our RV alongside of the stadium. Mm -hmm. So we got there very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. We were able to find a generous uh, group of folks to help us out to park. We parked behind some little gates. We went and did our tour. Yeah. Uh, Excellent tour, excellent tour guide. Went all around the stadium, got to go in the press box, got to sit in the oldest chairs in baseball. Yeah, um, old wooden bleachers. Yeah, we took pictures from every view, the great mm -hmm. uh, big green monster wall, mm -hmm. setting the chairs up there, walked around the back of the stadium, then we saw a red, single lone red chair with yeah. the longest home run in baseball ever was hit, and hit the guy in the head. It did? <laughs> Uh, saw Babe Ruth's bat and glove. Mm -hmm. Such such history and such really cool opportunity to go yeah. through the stadium. And as we were leaving, we went and pulled the rig up to take a picture of the rig with Boston Red Sox sign in the back. Mm -hmm. Fenway Park. At the time of our tour, they were building a stage for a concert, and we were chatting with those guys, and he's like, "Is that to come stand in center field?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> So we went and stood in center field and took a picture. Yeah. But we chatted with them. They come and check out the Airstream. Yep. We went and checked out the stage and got to go stand on center field. So it was pretty great. Uh, pretty cool opportunity for that. Yeah. So thank you if you guys happen to be watching. We really yeah. appreciate the, the hospitality that continued to prove Boston to us. Yeah. Then we drove out of town and we ate at Mark. Oh, not Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. One of the Wahlberg. Wahlberger. Wahlberger. So the Wahlberg brothers, the, the one that's the chef, created this burger joint. Mm -hmm. And we stopped and had lunch with Freddie, another friend of mine whom I haven't seen in a period of a long time. Yeah. Um, uh, really great to see him and catch up. He's a police officer there in town. So thank you for your service to our nation and your county and your town, your municipal. municipal. Um, had a really good catch-up session with him and uh, an 
awesome burger. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. I think we each got a different burger, so yeah, it was yeah. nice to see. So after our Walla burger, we got in the truck and we drove north into Maine. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned next week for all things Maine. Uh, Harvest Host, Acadia National Park, and a great hike. Mm -hmm. And Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor, yeah. yeah. So see you guys next week. Love you all. Happy adventures. Beautiful. <laughs>